everybody, I'm Glam, and today I'm gonna make a video, well, I'm, I suppose I'm gonna make a video, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through because I'm so bad at it, but I do want to do it, I wanna be good at it, but I guess it's practicing that takes, and today I'm gonna make a video, me and the curtain is not friends, um, today I was gonna make a video about, um, McTucker. And I was thinking if this is something people want to see, or well, if I think it's really funny, because it is really funny to know things about this. I was thinking about starting a series of um, Dead Rock Star facts about Dead Rock Star, because I feel like it's a very fun to find facts about them, and uh, ah, interesting. In case you don't know who Mick Tucker is, he is, if you describe him from a big perspective, he is uh, the drummer in the glam rock band The Sweet, or was, because he's dead and the original Sweet does not exist anymore. It existed and had its golden years in the 1970s with hits like The Bell and Blitz and loads and loads and loads of others like The Teenage Rampage, Fox on the Run. Big one, bam. Um, what is it called? The one with the police and the sirens and everything. I can't, I can't remember the name of it. Now, now, please, Blockbuster is it called? So, now I remember that. You just have to think about Steve with a weird moustache and, uh, when he's like, super weird, it's acting really weird, and, it's really fun to make this video because the sweep means so freaking much to me. I really, really love them and I started to listen to them when I was 12 years old and I'm 17 now. Um, next year I'm 18 so I'm a grown woman then. But um, I was only a child when I started to listen to them. <laughs> Even though it's not that long ago but it's years and years and years ago. So yeah. And I really love them. And the first one that I really, really liked in the suite, my first favorite member was Mick Tucker. I really, really, really thought that he was handsome, obviously. With his black hair and I think blue eyes. It's so old, those pictures that you can't really see. He looks like he has blue eyes and I really like him normally. Um, I changed my taste of boys because of him. Because of every member there, actually. Before I was all about the hair, like, you have to have long hair or I won't find you attractive at all. But now if they even look similar to anyone in the suite, especially Mick Tucker or Brian Connolly, because they're gorgeous. Um, um, if, they, if they look anything like them, I will find them very attractive. So I was, like, in love with some guy with no hair, like, he shaved his hair up. And I didn't even care, I was like, what's hair? You've got a pretty face. I do though think that we have spoken enough about me and my opinion about this week because it's kind of obvious, especially on my Instagram. Now I um, will go to the facts about Mick Tucker. That will be a little bit of his life story, but not everything because I'm not an expert and I've taken this information from Wikipedia. Mick Thomas Tucker was born in 1947 in Halston, London, Great Britain. By the age of 18 or 19, because it says two things on the Wikipedia side, he played in pubs and clubs with a band called Wayne Rice Gentlemen. Later on, a young man named Brian Connolly also joined this band. This band, Wayne Rice Gentlemen, played a mixture of R&B, Motown and early psychedelic sounds. I really like that, psychedelic. That's a real fun word. I don't know. And that was before they split in 1968. And Brian Connolly, the vocalist in this band who split, Wayne Rice Gentleman. It's really hard to say that fast, I think. Wayne Rice Gentleman. Because it's really hard words. Brian Connolly and Mick Tucker had a little chat. And they started Sweet Shop. And in the original band, Sweet Shop, were De Priest, drummer Mick Tucker, vocalist Brian Connolly, and the first guitarist was 
called Frank, I think. And then he got kicked out or stopped just being in the band. And there were another guitarist called Mick. And he left because he was getting married. Which is weird, because all of the other members were already married. I mean, you don't have to leave the world for a marriage. You don't have to leave music for a marriage, right? Because then I don't want marriage. I, I don't want it anyways, but, you know, maybe you find a nice bloke sometime. Do you want to marry? I don't know. And in 1969, this band changed its name to The Sweet. And in the 1970s, it said very much louder. Mick met a girl named Pauline in the 1970s or 60s. I do not know. They did marry. They had a daughter named Aston. That's a really cute name. I, I like names that are, you know, sounding like a town. Like Paris and... Florida. Florida is a state, not a, not a... Anyways, his second wife was Janet. They were married to his death in 2002. When he died of leukemia which he battled for a long time. Five years before Mick Tucker died in leukemia, he had a bone marrow transplant from his brother and, you know, he seemed to be fine. And there are loads of medical words that I do not understand and I can't Google them all, so I'm just assuming here that everything was fine um, in five years, you know. It it was fine during these five years, um, then he went worse and died of leukemia 2002, very sadly. It's just a very sad thing, I think, because a bone marrow transplant is not, it's, it's not a small thing. It's, I, I believe it's very painful and not only for Mick, but also for his brother. And then, well, he got five more years with him. That, that's something, actually, that's something, but I was thinking if, it didn't, if he didn't recover at all and it didn't work at all, then he would be really sad over it because they both gone through pain that wasn't worth when they had five more years together. Um, but it's still a very sad thing. Cancer overall is a very sad thing. I can't imagine how much pain he has been through. Um, and how sad it must have been to be one of his related, his wife or his daughter, and just standing beside him as he died. Because it says that in Wikipedia too, that they were in beside his bed when he died. It must have been so painful. But I also imagine that it might be a quite pretty moment as well. Kind of an... A nice moment to know that you've been there when he passed away so that he wasn't alone when he passed away but it's still you know you should have lived not died and after those five years it was a shock to those in the suite at least um because after those five years they thought that he was fine and then it's just he never He's never been, you know, the same. Never, he never recovered totally, which is fine. It's blood cancer, but um, then he got sick again, and that really surprised. And he's gotten slippery. He's buried in an unmarked grave in Charlie House Cemetery. I suppose this is in Great Britain because it sounds like it, and it's his birth country. Um, otherwise, it's in probably in USA, but I do think that it's in Great Britain. Just Google it and I think you will find it. At the grave, or, well, it's an unmarked grave, so they don't know where exactly he is, probably, so the idiots won't vandalize it, because that has happened, which is horrible. Um, but at the place, at, you know, near the location where he's buried, there's a wooden bench with a brass plaque or plague you, plaque, I don't know funded by fans as a dedication to the drama that's very sweet 
And I do think it's a good thing that they don't have a gravestone, but they do have a memorial thing, because there are idiots um, in this world, and they vandalise church property, and especially when it comes to famous people, they like to vandalise graves, because they think it's funny in their weird, twisted world. So, so I do think it's good, really good, and um, very cute that they have dedicated this to him. Also on the site, uh, on Wikipedia, you can read so much more, but I made this video because I like making videos. It's really funny, but I'm so bad at it. Andy Scott was really, really like, was saying, uh, telling someone in an interview that um, about Mick Tucker and his death and things like that, that he were a very underrated drummer. He was, and, and he really was, I mean, he was really good, just listen to the drums, for once, when you listen to the sweet songs. Um, and drummers do have very, very much skills, and they have to be good at what they're doing, because it's the, the main thing, and, you know, the rhythm and the rhythm is like the base of everything of the whole song it's like the foundation of the song so it is really really important to have skills as a drummer and to basically he was more than just a good drummer he was really good so that was everything for me and um it's really sad Maybe I will make more videos about dead rock stars in the future, who knows. But this was really fun to make, so see you later. Or something, I don't know.